Hello. Uh, thanks for coming. I'm going to talk about a couple of ways of using breakpoints that will hopefully help you debug in a better way. First of all, a bit about who I am. My name is Philip Sutton. Worked for a variety of companies over the years. Some old languages, some new. Um, hobbies, ice hockey. And then if you need to contact me um, about this presentation or anything else regarding debugging, the Twitter handle and email is there. First of all, we'll talk about data breakpoints. Now, with Visual Studio, with .NET Core 3, we've got the break when value changes has been introduced, which is quite... So when a variable changes its value, the code will now stop. And that works for reference types, so that will be things that are on the heap. But if you're using something before .NET Core 3, what do you do? Well, you can start to use conditional breakpoints. Now, we've got some code, and if you've got a class like the person, you can set a breakpoint on the set part and then set a condition, and you need to set it on the, something that uniquely identifies that record. So in this case, it would be the ID, and you can set the ID to a value, and then when you run your code, it will actually break on that value. But then that actually takes you to the set point so you actually want to see the line that actually changes it, have a look at the call stack and jump up a level, and then you actually see the line that changes the value. So that's like using conditional breakpoints in .NET Core 2 or even just the full framework. The other part that I was going to talk about was actions. With actions, you can either display information to the output window and you can also assign values. And if you use that with conditions, you can do some quite clever things. So hopefully, yes, with the actions, what you can do is you can get a show the message to the output window. And this is quite good because you can actually put sort of extra login into your code when you're debugging without actually having to change your code. And if you see there, I've got the dollar function. That'll give you the name of the function that's actually that you're in at the time. And if you put dollar in that part of the show message, you get other functions as well, so you can talk about the, the calling routine. And Sorry, it goes off the, the edge there. Um, but you put the value of, and then the variable or something, and if you put the value that you want to display inside curly brackets, then you get that actually is displayed. As you can see in the bottom part of it, I've got the inactions, program, main st string, and then the value of i is, and then whatever it is. You've also got the tick box there, so continue code execution. So the actions, you can have it where it just keeps on going through and doesn't actually stop at the breakpoint. If you untick it, then it will all stop. But you can also, with the actions, get it to set values. So if you had a loop that goes around 100 times, but when you're actually debugging, you know the first 50 work fine. I don't want to have to step, and step through. So what you can actually do on the act actions, you can actually set the value of your variable. So I've got an example there where I set i equal to 50. And so that when it goes into the loop, i will be equal to 50 and you miss out the ones. But if you only do that, then it will actually set i each time in the loop to 50, so you never actually come out. So you need to put a condition in as well. So if you put in the condition, say if you're in the loop, you can turn around and say when i is equal to 0, then I actually want I to be set equal to 50. Then it only does it the once that comes in there, so then you can actually start off with 50. So a bit of a summary. Um, we've got conditional breakpoints, so they're the simulation of breakpoint value changes in earlier versions of net. And actions allow extra login and the manipulation of variables. And if you want to read a bit more about that, there's some references on the breakpoint data changes, conditional breakpoints, actions and trace points. Thank you.